Hello everybody, welcome again. And we are in another The School of Light, the educational series of Agape Love. Love is here's global teaching ministry with me, Pastor Deborah. Hi everybody out in the garden. It's wonderful to see you today. Yes, are, are we going to pray? Yes, would you like to pray? Okay, you go right ahead. That was so sweet. Thank you. I want to welcome everybody. Yes, I was just in another section of the garden over there teaching. There were some powerful things happening. People were taking off this old icky crown of thorns, this evil, wicked crown, and getting a new and glorious, righteous crown. Yeah, of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And we're here today in the School of Light. Can you see? It's kind of way far back there. We're in the section of on the website. I'm working my way through it, remember? We are in the Kingdom of Agape Love, Prayer and Fasting, Volume 1. This is the precursors, all of my training and learning that I, Pastor Deborah, had to go through from being a mental health counselor, helping people with problems, the ways of the world, to helping people the Lord's way. In the last School of Light Light series, we had learned about prayer and fasting, that the ways that Pastor Deborah had to learn. Now we're learning about the basic foundational scriptures that had been foundational in Pastor Deborah's life even now, that came out of the Old Testament from the prophet named Isaiah. It was Isaiah 61 and 62. We heard about this way, way before the Spirit of the Lord actually came to fulfill this. We heard about it here in Luke from a young man named Christ Jesus in the synagogue when he got up and he read part of Isaiah 61 and said, These words were now fulfilled in your ears today. Isaiah 61 was a prophecy, prophetic decreed words of what was to come spiritually. What had already been happening was earthly freedom in many cases, earthly battles and war. But God was after the spirit. He always was. Because we also learn from this Christ Jesus that God is a spirit. He doesn't want to be worshipped around a tree, through statutes, in boxes and cubes, as you walk around the circle. He doesn't want to be bowed to six times a day. He wants your spirit to worship him. And he is seeking your spirit to worship him spiritually. But most humanity does not know that. They do not know how to worship spiritually. They know how to worship in the flesh, singing, dancing, bowing, rocking, repeating prayers, uh, doing fast for the physical body, uh, doing traditions and rituals, going on pilgrimages to places. But that's not what he's looking for. He was looking for the spirit of humanity to worship him who is a spirit in the spirit and by truth, by knowledge and knowing who you were and who he was. Yeah, because it says he is a spirit and he's looking for that. So I had to learn that the spirit wasn't doing that. Isaiah 61 and 62 were unfolded to me years ago to see and peer behind the words spiritually. And then I would look at this young man and what he did during his 
earthly time in ministry. Then I was put in my own learning time of how this looked spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's pick up where we left off in lesson number one of this school of light. And it's entitled, The Father's Heart, The Father's Desires, and The Father's Prophetic Words. Isaiah 61, we'll do a quick review of verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is spiritually upon me. And why was that upon the Word of God? Because the Lord, the Heavenly Father, has spiritually anointed me, the words of spirit and life, the Son of God, to preach and reveal and proclaim the good tidings, to declare and speak, to tell the spiritual truth unto the spiritually meek. And who were the spiritually meek? Those who are spiritually deficient in spiritual strength and courage. And verse 1 goes on, He, the Heavenly Father, the Lord Most High God, has spiritually sent me. He sent His Word. Mm -hmm. The words of spirit and life into the likeness of flesh and blood, into the body of Jesus, to spiritually bind up heal and restore spiritually broken, fractured spiritual hearts and souls to spiritually preach and proclaim and announce and decree spiritual liberty and freedom. From what? From spiritual fear of death and the law of sin and death and its spiritual judgment of the sting of death. This sting of death was a torture, a vexation, a continual burning fear. It was to the spiritual captives, the children who had no spiritual power, who had spiritually become the spiritual tail, the spirit to the soul, and to its sin nature, and its soul's lust of its flesh, and its pride of life. So the word of God had come. It was prophesied to come. And he said, I will send my word to heal you. And when this young man got up in Luke and said, it has arrived. It is here today. And it is fulfilled. Each prophecy that was spoken by this God of Isaiah 61 had to be fulfilled. So we're going to pick up. And we're going to continue on with our teaching that Pastor Deborah had to learn. The last little part of verse 1 said that this word of God, this Christ inside of the body Jesus, this Christ, this anointed spiritual man with the word of God, the spirit of life, was to preach and proclaim a spiritual opening was now here. The spiritual prison doors of death, bondage, slavery, and oppression had now been opened. And they were no longer going to be spiritually bound in them. And when he went to a cross, he walked out of the prison cell, for he became one of us. And he walked to the gallows. He walked to the time when the Romans would put you on a cross. Many people think the Romans killed him. No. The Father's prophetic word said, I sent my word to heal them. The Son, the word said, Father, I will take their place. Just like a young man gave his life for another in the movie Horatio Hornblower, Archie. I just talked about that in the crown. Go watch the movies from BBC, Horatio Hornblower. See Archie give his life to save his friend. Mm -hmm. This young man, this Christ, put on the crown of thorns, went to the gallows, had his head chopped off, so to speak, was hung, crucified, and he said, I've paid the punishment. I took your crime. 
that you've been in jail for, separated from this loving Father. The price is paid. Now you can come out. That's what Isaiah 61 was telling, prophesying way back then. And this young man came and said, it's now being fulfilled. Now let's go to verse number two. These were vital in Pastor Deborah's life. I had to know Isaiah 61 and 62. It was the Father's heart for all of humanity. It was the Father's desires for all of humanity. And it was the Father's prophetic words for all of humanity. You, spiritual little ones. This was a spiritual work that was to be played out in the realm of the Spirit. You could see some of it in the natural world. You could see this Jesus being whipped and crucified. But nobody knew what was really going on except Satan and his demons. They knew what happened in hell. They saw this glorified young man, innocent, come down and set the prisoners free all the way back to Adam, who had been held in prison cells and could not yet leave for the price had not yet been paid. He went into where captivity was being held captive. And he said, you are free now. He took the keys and the authority back of hell, death, and the grave from Satan and his demons. And he passed them on to Pastor Deborah and all believers. These scriptures are powerful to study. They changed my life. And they were powerful in changing me from being a mental health counselor, helping people the way of the world, to helping people the Lord's way. They are foundational, and you must study them, write them, read them, go over them, follow the scripture references out. So let's now go to verse 2 in this lesson. Lesson number two, I believe it is. Just a minute, let me see. Yep, we're in lesson number two of the School of Light of Prayer and Fasting, Volume 1. We are in this section of the Father's heart, the Father's desires, and the Father's prophetic words. And it's Isaiah 61, verse 2. To spiritually proclaim, the word says, that it had was anointed, that's its purpose, and it had come to earth. To spiritually proclaim and announce and decree, that means make law, to preach the spiritually acceptable year, age, time, fulfillment of the Lord. It's now done. And the spiritual day, the age of his spiritual vengeance of our spiritual God. When this young man, Christ Jesus in Luke said, Today it is fulfilled in your ears. He had come to fulfill verse 2 and say, Now is the spiritual age, the time, the fulfillment of Isaiah 61 in your ears and even now to all of you all of humanity this is the day the time the age of the spiritual vengeance of our spiritual god remember i learned how to see and understand the spiritual behind the words not denominationals not even out of the original hebrew i do not read hebrew or Greek. I need the spiritual. So I put the word spiritual in front of the words. If you And people get real tired of it. But it helps me to line up with when Jesus tells that woman at the well that God is a spirit and he wants you to worship in spirit and in truth and that his words are spirit and life. I had to put the word spiritual in front of everything. Because over time, that's what I was working in. The realm of the spiritual. The realm of the unseen. Uh And why was this word, this age, this spiritual vengeance of God going to be declared 
at a later date. And here's why. Verse 2 still. To spiritually okay, comfort all that spiritually mourn in their spiritual grief for their unknown spiritual losses, for their spiritual pain and their spiritual sorrows of a heart that had spiritually fallen into spiritual darkness, which is spiritual ignorance of the spiritual agape love. Now, that's sort of what you would call amplified. And I learned to do that slowly. But it helps me to see, because we wonder why the if somebody gets believing in this Christ Jesus, their soul sometimes and their physical conditions don't change. They still die. They still get killed in battle. They still starve, get diseases. That doesn't seem to change. And a lot of their souls don't change. They're still greedy and lustful and evil and wicked and corrupt, lie, cheat, and steal. Because that's not what he was after. He was after the spirit that had been the king, the head, and it had sunk down into this soul, the flesh. And it was just now the tail. It knew nothing of freedom. The soul was the king. And he said, I've come to set the spirit free. Now how the other two parts get free is the physical body must die. Physically. And the soul will die with the physical body. They are one. Mm -hmm. And you can have the two deaths. Pastor Deborah had a soul death. You go look at the story. It's time. You will see that what Jan, what I had been called and had been developed called Jan, was evil and wicked. It had to die. And Pastor Deborah had to come anew and arise in the soul, in the spirit. And my soul had to submit and be a helpmate to the spirit called Pastor Deborah. Now, Pastor Deborah's going to get a new name. Don't know what it is later on. But right now, it's Pastor Deborah. But the old soul, its lust, its desires had to die, had to give way and be on the cross. Pastor Deborah was helped to have this powerful experience in the soul and the physical body by having a dream spiritually and seeing myself spiritually inside of Christ on the cross, which he says he took me. And in God's eyes and in his heart, he says, the old icky old Jan went to a cross because it was evil, wicked, foul, demonic, and it died. It was crucified, judged, and died. I felt it. I had a spiritual revelation of being inside of Christ, being crucified, whipped, going into hell. And then being resurrected. Till you have those spiritual experiences. You don't get the revelation that you died. I run into this with believers who say, I am a believer. But in their childhood, they were sexually abused or something happened. And they still are living in that identity. In their soul, that they are still not healed and they are still a victim. If you get saved after the event, that old you that that happened to died, no longer exists. You are a new creature in Christ. When this happened to Pastor Deborah, I had to look at husband and go, I didn't marry you. Jan did. But I will honor her stuff. I will stay with you. I will make sure you get buried, say the prayers over you. I had to go to Jan's biological son and say, I am not your mother. I'm Pastor Deborah. I never had you spiritually. You came from Jan out of the soul and the body. But will you be my spiritual son? He said, yes. I had to look at people from Jan's past and go, I don't know who you are. I had to look at Jan's houses she lived in. 
Pastor Deborah didn't grow up in those. Because what Satan wanted to do was get Jan back alive and keep you in that old image. That old nature where the soul and its wounds and its ick rule and control the spirit. I was tested on this many times, and I'll tell you how. I was driving along, going up north on the interstate, and I was passing Montgomery, Alabama, where Jan grew up, not all her life, but some of her life, where a lot of ick happened. And I had this thought, and it said, why don't you just get off the interstate, you got time, and go by the house where you lived. And I go, oh, wait a minute, I'm Deborah now. Deborah's a new creature in Christ, never existed, never had that experience, never lived in that house that was not Deborah's family, don't know what you're talking about. If I go there, then I bring Jan back out of the grave myself with all the hurts and the wounds. So I knew it was from Satan. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I just ignored it. But I saw for what it was. Until you know you are a new creature in Christ. Brand new. Never had those experiences in childhood. Never were trafficked. Never were abused. Nothing. And you don't even know that family of that old person. Because you you're a new creature now. And you live it. And you look out of your spiritual eyes through your soul and you look at things and you go, I I had the opportunities. I would run into people in a spin class in the gym. I go, I think that was somebody Jan knew. And if I walked up to them and said, hi, do you remember me? Jan would have been brought back to life because Jan knew them. Deborah did not. I had people walk up to me in Walmart. This lady that Jan had scuba dived with and knew. And she walked up and says, don't I know you? I said, I don't think so. I said, what's your name? And she told me. And I said, my name was Pastor Deborah. She said, you sure look familiar. If I had said to her, don't you remember we used to scuba dive together? And we, Jan would have come back out of the tomb, out of the grave, and been alive in the soul. And taken her rightful place and all the open doors to the demonics, the wounds, the ick, the torment and vexing of Satan would have been opened up again. And I had to just go, no, I don't know you. I, 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 you don't look familiar to me. Because she was a part of the past, the old. So when I work and do ministry with those that had childhood abuse and trauma, and yet they say they're believers, I can instantly see they have not developed and taken on the new identity as a creature, a new creature in Christ. In all things old, their abuse, all the injustice have passed away. All the depression, the anxiety, it's all passed away. And all things are new. They are new. They've never been abused. That family, that was not their family. They have a new family now. But I can't really get into a lot of that with them because they don't believe it. So they suffer in their old self and their own their old belief system, their old person. They've not yet come to the spiritual revelation that they're a new creature in their soul and spirit. So I had to learn about this. I had to go through Isaiah 61, even though I was saved at four years old. The realization and the revelations have to come. You have to get in that word, and it has to make sense to you over and over and over. And I had to put that word spiritual in front of it. And then I had to learn how to go from the spiritual newness, resurrection, and kill the, the and recognize the old soul, Jan, had died on a cross, was punished. And a new creature rose up with Jesus in the tomb, 
totally glorified. You won't believe what I'm praying for, that my physical body will be changed to immortal. And I've, and I've already passed through death. God says in his mind, my physical body has already passed through death. It's already died in his eyes and heart. And I'm asking for that immortality now so I can get his work done. I can get all the recording done. I have some powerful things that line up with the word. He said I am totally spirit in my soul and physically resurrected in his heart and mind. It's done. Now, I have to believe it, accept it. So I'm asking him to maybe when I have a dream to instantaneously stop my heart and make my body immortal, though it will never die. I don't don't know if he will, but I'm believing for the things that he said have already happened. I'm trying to line up my spirit and my soul with Isaiah 61. I'm trying to line up my concepts and ideas, my beliefs. I'm leaning on the word that I am a new creature in spirit, soul, and physical body. That all things old have passed away. And I am a new creature in three areas. Just like Christ Jesus came out of the tomb, I can take on different forms and shapes. I can be translated physically, spiritually. I don't have to look the same way. My body does not have to go through decay and disease. I'm at least asking. I'm asking for that revelation, that truth, that backing up. That death has no power over me. I've already died. This is heavy-duty believing Pastor Deborah had to go through in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven as a king already. I'd passed through being a prince. I'd passed all my tests, studied for years and years, practiced under tutors, teachers, under pastors and teachers, till I was released. This is powerful stuff that Pastor Deborah had to have. To help people the Lord's way. You don't understand the power of your thoughts, your spirit yet. You study this. You go slow. You put that word spiritual in front of it. You begin believing that you were a mess. And something needed to help you. The word. Now I must look on the word. I must Develop that word and that newness in me. I must become in my thoughts, concepts, ideas, philosophies, beliefs, a new creature that has never been existed or created before. Not even of the area of Adam, the original formation with man. And I'm a higher being now. I'm a king. And I had to get there. And these scriptures of Isaiah 61 and 62 helped me to get there. And I hope we're going to stop here at verse 2 so you can think about these stories and being a new creature in Christ and having these revelations. So Satan and sickness and disease will have no power over you. Now it will try to get you back. And keep saying you are the old you. Well, I believe, but I'm still a victim. Well, I believe I'm still hopeless. I believe, but I'm still this. Okay, I'm not a Democrat, a Republican. Do you know I don't even vote? That's not my country anymore. My nation is the kingdom of heaven. There is no voting. Now, I try not to have opinions, but I use politics To show you the word of God. I don't vote. This is not my country. Where I live. I am about the father's business. So I want you to ponder now. And think. Go back and read the scriptures for yourself. And ask yourself. For God to fulfill Isaiah 61. In your life. And start beginning to walk. And let him change you into a new creature in Christ that has never existed. And all your old things, 
your abuses, your hurts, your wounds, your memories, your flashbacks. They are all gone. And they go to the grave. And they're buried. But you can bring them back up and Satan will try. Just like he did with Pastor Deborah. I want to close now with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, all those that you have brought here today to the school of light under the kingdom of agape love, prayer and fasting, volume one. In the section where we're talking about a father's heart, a father's desires, and your prophetic words, we thank you, Father, but your heart is drawing them by your Holy Spirit, you know who's here. You know where they're from, their condition. Father, I ask you to help them have the cross experience as Pastor Deborah did. That their old soul, their old them, if they will believe in you, went to a cross inside your son and died. And they are now new creatures in Christ, in your mind and heart, by your words, your desire, by Isaiah 61. Help them come out of their prison cells. Help them to be spiritually the head again. Help to fulfill Isaiah 61 in their life. Father, when they get back in their souls, let them have the revelation. They are a new creature in Christ, free, that has been spiritually circumcised through a Hebrews 4.12, a new creature like a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly, beautiful and gorgeous. Father, help them to have the realization like Pastor Deborah did, that they are not who they used to be. They are not victims held in that identity. They don't have to have the flashbacks. They don't have to remain in hopelessness and drug addiction and with criminal minds and violence, that that is all passed away, that they are a creature of Isaiah 61 and 62, creatures of agape love, joy and peace now, spiritually, and let that flow out to their soul and their physical bodies. Help them, Father. They need you so much. They cannot do this without you. They cannot do it without your Holy Spirit helping them. The enemy is so powerful. The memories, the world is so powerful against them. They are but babies. Father, help them all you can. That they may become new in you. And believe your word was sent Their price of separation and bondage is over. They are not who they are, who they believe they are. They don't have those memories anymore. Take them. Those with flashbacks, take the memories. Those with childhoods of abuse and trauma, take the memories, Father. Help them to become new in you. That only you can do this, Father, to defeat the enemy as you did on the cross, to defeat the enemies of your spirit, of your word, of your kingdom. Father, do this battle for them, for they cannot do it themselves. Give them the gift of life, of freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, I want everybody to just Oh my gosh, thank you, Father. I see your answer. It's coming. It's coming down and it's here. Everybody just stay still. What is that? It's called the blanket of his glory. He is putting his presence on you. Doing the work that I prayed for him to do. Don't be afraid. Let him work and clean you up. Make you new spiritually. You will feel different. Father, I leave them with you and your garden until the next school of light. And we continue on with verse number three of a father's heart, a father's desires and your prophetic words of Isaiah 61. Thank you, Father, for your love has no boundaries, no borders, 
and no limits. Thank you, Father. Bye, everybody. You enjoy. I'll see you again. Thank you for listening and watching this video. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you stopped by today and watch. This is Pastor Deborah, and I hope you come again and watch many, many more videos and learn and grow spiritually and hear how she has helped people spiritually the Lord's way for many, many years. Come again, watch another one, and we welcome you to be a subscriber to the channel, to make comments. And if you wish to contact Pastor Deborah, please email her at her email address for the ministry at Pastor Deborah at Agape Love is here dot org. You can also see these videos on Twitter and on the website in the many different sections that they are put into. Enjoy and it was once again an honor to have you watch and listen. Thank you and come again to another video of Agape Love, Love is Here Ministries, a ministry of helping people the Lord's way that Pastor Deborah has been doing for many, many years. Love always and forever, Pastor Deborah.